the barefoot ballroom where we would dance. I would clean it at 6 a.m. two to three times a week in exchange for my NIA classes. So I dove in um, pretty committed. I was taking two to three classes, practicing weekly. And what I initially noticed was that there was something that kept gravitating me to come back. And it didn't matter how committed I needed to be first thing in the morning. And I would take a bus. I didn't have a vehicle when I lived here. So it was a pretty big commitment. Hello, everybody. My name is Christina May Wolf, and I am your host for the NIA Dancing Through Life Community Spotlight. This series is an opportunity to share the stories and the people within the global NIA community. Today, I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Valerie Sanchez. Valerie is a NIA Brown Belt teacher who lives in Honolulu, Hawaii, and has been practicing NIA for the past 10 years. Valerie brings a light and a passion uh, to the NIA community, and I'm so grateful to have her here today. Welcome, Valerie. I am so glad that you're here. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Mahalo nui loa. So, Valerie, I can't even remember exactly when we first got connected, but I remember once we finally connected on social media, I just fell in love with your light, your presence, and your obvious passion for NIA and specifically NIA community. So would you share with all of us your NIA story? Yes, definitely. Um, and actually, I think we might have connected because I was trying to take a NIA blue belt training with Britta in Centralia. And that That's kind right. of kickstarted the journey. <laughs> That's <love>. right. <laughs> yes. Um, so my NIA journey, in short, I was living in Honolulu. I was working for a startup media company, and uh, they, there was a new center that was going to be opening up in March 2011. Uh, the name of the center is still in Moving Center. Maybe some of you have uh, visited this center before here in Hawaii um, with Renee Talonson, who's the director and the owner, uh, also a NIA second degree black belt teacher. And basically, I walked in for the media preview. I had no idea what I was walking into. It was very interesting that the invitation was not directed to the publication. It was directed specifically to Valerie and that threw me off because it was never directly to Valerie. Uh, but we showed up, I showed up with a writer, a photographer, and Renee offered a 15 minute demo of Nia. And my initial response was, what is that? <laughs> what is that? But I'm curious. And curiosity was really the hook for me. When we left, um, they gave us little packages. And within the packages, there were five complimentary classes. And I chose to use them all to dive deeper to discover what this Nia thing was about. And um, five classes later, here I am. And I've never looked back. Don't think I will either. So that's mm. how my journey got started. <laughs> wow. And so how long you got your five complimentary classes, it had you hooked. <laughs> and then what yeah. did your practice look like after that? How often did you attend classes? And what did you begin to notice shift or change in your body or your life at that time? That was actually where the revelation for me occurred. Something happened in those five classes where I realized that I was creating a commitment that I didn't really sign up for, that I didn't know I needed in my life. Um, the classes here in, in Hawaii tend to be quite pricey. And I was working for a startup company. So I was kind of on the entrepreneurial journey and um, funds were limited for extracurricular activities. And so I proposed to Renee and then we worked out some things in exchange. So I would clean the center, um, the pretty much the center, the, ball, the barefoot ballroom where we would dance. I would clean it at 6 a.m. two to three times a week in exchange for my NIA classes. So I dove in um, pretty committed. I was taking two to three classes practicing weekly. And what I initial, initially noticed was that there was something that kept gravitating me to come back. And it didn't matter 
how committed I needed to be first thing in the morning. And I would take a bus. I didn't have a vehicle when I lived here. So it was a pretty big commitment. And I just thought, there's some reason for this. And I just feel like I just have to keep going with it. So I kept practicing for at least a year and a half before a seed was planted to me about a NIA training. And I had no idea what that meant. And then that opened up another portal. That is such commitment, Valerie. <laughs> I mean, as, as a teacher and a studio owner, I see a lot of people come and go through the doors and that level of commitment to, to volunteer to clean at 6 a.m. after taking a bus in just in order to take classes two to three times a week, that speaks to the power of what drew you and kept you coming back. Wow, I didn't know that about you. That's wonderful. Yeah. So then a year and a half in, was that when you signed up for your white belt or was that when you stepped into your white belt? And what was the catalyst for making that big investment and that big commitment? So Renee brought up very casually a uh, NIA training. She said, oh, maybe, you know, you're, you may be in a, in a space or in a place to contemplate taking a, a NIA belt. And I said, what does that even mean? And then she, you know, we met and she broke down the whole martial arts system, the belt system, explained what I would have considered a little insight because it's so deep, right? Training is just so much more than just signing up for a training. But uh, she showed me a few pictures and this is how she got me. She showed me a few pictures of a few trainers. Um, I didn't even know there was Neo trainers. I, I wasn't even aware of that. And there was a photo of one woman that I just felt like I need to meet this woman and I don't know what I need to do to meet her. And it was Britta von Tagen. And I said, she's got to be my trainer. <laughs> so I said, her. <laughs> and before I knew it, Renee worked her magic, um, whatever that meant to produce a belt. And um, I said, okay, I'm going to commit to this financially and energetically. This is a big commitment, but I'm going to find the means and the ways. And so I found the means and the ways and I signed up for my NIA white belt July, 2012. Wow. And so yeah. what was your white belt experience like? What, what did you walk away on the other side or dance away on the other side with what, what were the pearls, the gifts? It was a kind of like a challenging time for me. My partner who's now my husband um, we were planning an around the world trip it was going to be an indefinite amount of time so we were balancing multiple jobs we knew we were moving off the island so one of the things we did was we moved into his 1976 VW bus and we just vagabond on the beach I would still have to show up for work I would still show up to clean the center but I was living out of the bus <laughs> And that's when I did my training, <laughs> which Britta loved. Um, so I started to realize that somewhere in this training, I was getting access to tools that were making me navigate through these transitions with a smile. So there were tears for sure, many times, so many, but there was still a smile. There were still that... Um, that desire to, to move forward with the projects and the ideas and the plans we had. And I felt like that I had tapped into something that was giving me the exercise. It was giving me, you know, the sweat and all the dance, but there was something deeper and that those tools were going to become very valuable for my around the world trips. So for me, it was a click of knowing not only did you make the right investment in signing up for this training, but you've got an access to something that is going to be way beyond what you imagine. Uh, I just didn't know what it really was. And, and I'm still always discovering it. I'm still always discovering that. Wow. I can't even imagine the intensity of that, of the white belt immersion on the cusp of taking this huge leap to travel around the world. And that was one of the fascinating things to witness from afar on social media to watch your, your journey. So how long after your white belt did you, did you take off and begin your, your vagabond journey? So the training completed in July, 2012, and we were moving off island October, 2012. 
Um, so I did, uh, Renee is, if, if anybody's met Renee, she's, she's got a way to just throw you into some sort of river. And so I subbed a few classes just by, by way, a few songs here, a few songs there. I got my feet wet. Of course, I was completely terrified, um, but, but I didn't. And I knew that that meant that I would take the practice on the road with me. I would pack it in my bag and that I knew that this wasn't just going to be, a, okay, well, I did that and I'll get back to it. No, I, I'd heard many rumors about Mia being very global and there being a global community. So I was on a mission now. Um, so it was about three to four months after when I took off. And in those three to four months, you, you were practicing teaching. Yeah. Yep. Lots of teddy bear and- moments. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then as you began to travel and, and travel and see the world, but also visit Nia communities around the world, what did you experience? What did you learn in each community and what pieces did you find were constant as you visited Nia communities throughout the world and what what did you find was unique? Well, there there's the key word unique. I definitely was. Um, it was a f- very affirmative to see style uniqueness, um, the approach of teachers and communities themselves. They were very varied. They were diverse, which I loved. Um, and they all had their own flavor, their own, their own. I knew that there were certain classes I could go take and I was going to come out of there feeling like a sassy lady. And then I knew there was other classes that I would go into and I knew I was gonna drop a lot of tears on their floor. Like it was amazing to be able to find um, different variations of the medicine. What I felt was very continuous was the threat of the promise. I, I never felt out of, I, I never felt like I encountered a class that was out of Mia's promise or commitment to having the space and the permission to take care of yourself and whatever that meant that day and in that moment in time. I, I never, I never got exposed to anything otherwise than that. And I always felt in charge. I felt empowered. So um, I realized, yeah, this is the thread. This exists in Australia. This exists in Boston, this exists in Denver, through the Danas, through the Christinas, we're all delivering this. And it's really beautiful. I feel so lucky to experience that. Valerie, when did you begin your teaching journey in earnest? Did did you, were you able to teach along the road as you traveled? Or did you establish your teaching when you, when you landed back home? I did some teaching. It was um, it was very sporadic. I did some teaching in Australia. So I have to say that I truly felt that after the white belt, I was um, I was taken under the wing of Mia Australia for about a year. I was there close to the year, eleven and a half months um, on a travel visa. And there were some individuals, so- Sophie Marsh, definitely one of them, Julie Bartley. Um, Lisa Silverstone, who's now in the the U.S. in Colorado, they were friends, dancers, mentors, and they would often encourage me to pop in, teach a class. And so I cultivated with me Australia quite a bit. I offered some classes like spin off while I was traveling through Thailand and Bali. Um, But I really feel like I started my teaching practice when I got back. So I, I jumped right in November, 2014. My trip um, concluded basically at the two year mark. Um, and then I just started teaching. I moved to Tallahassee, Florida. That's where my alma mater is at. I went to Florida State University and that's when I jumped back in and haven't looked back either. <laughs> <laughs> I've had hiatus, but um, I've been pretty committed. I jumped right in with three classes a week. Again, terrified, but I still did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the definition of courage, right? Being terrified and doing it anyway. Yeah. And, and I don't know any teacher of Nia or any other modality that, that feels ready 
when they begin. There's always that leaping off point into the unknown. And that's how, that's how we learn and we grow. So were all of the classes that you started teaching classic NIA classes at that point? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Were. Yeah. And then when did you create Groove and Wellness, your, your company? Uh, and, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, but the focus of Groove and Wellness is, is not only offering uh, Nia, but also really providing resources and support for businesses and a little more corporate environment to bring health and wellness. Is that is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. You said it beautifully. I'm going to record you. <laughs> so when did you create Groove and Wellness and what was the inspiration to make that connection? That's a, that's a, a unique application of Nia. Yes. So for, for me, I officially um, birthed or the idea it came to its fruition in 2016. And it really took more momentum in 2017 after I had done some traveling around the U.S. for Nia as well. Um, and basically, for me, I was looking for something that would bridge what I consider to be soft, hippie, soulful Val with more of the corporate um, business side of me. And it was kind of like an identity thing. It, it was an identity initiative. And I felt there has to be other people out there that can resonate with this message of it's, you know, you can be this more yang, um, you could be very dedicated to your career and your profession. And yet, what tools and resources are we using to nourish ourselves, to take care of ourselves so that we can show up and be the best that we can be um, wherever we are in life? So that's really what initiated Groove and Wellness. Well, and you embody that balance of yin and yang and form and freedom so beautifully in your own teaching and practice and to be able to bring that to people who who, who might not have ever walked into a NIA class otherwise. That's really powerful. What has been your, what have been your biggest challenges as a NIA teacher? And maybe even specifically in, in bridging that, that gap or reaching new people in new environments with NIA? So in my, in, I feel in my teaching practice, it has been the, the act of starting from scratch, um, building community from scratch because of uh, my lifestyle and some of the paths that I've taken that have um, involved picking up and moving, picking up and moving, or, you know, being more transition and transition. So I feel that has been challenging, but it also has been what has helped me grow my toughest skin, I, I feel. Um, I attribute my oh, well, if it was just me who showed up, that's cool. If 100 people showed up, that's great. I'm still committed. I'm still going to deliver. I'm still going to plan. I'm still going to project. Um, for Groove and Wellness is taking off hats and then putting on other hats, knowing how to speak to, um, and I'm always learning how, how to relay the message of Nia, how to relay the message even more so of that of just health and wellness in, in a corporate realm or corporate environment is challenging. It's definitely challenging. And geographically, demographically, it makes a difference too. Yeah, some markets could probably be a little tougher than others. In some places, people are more ripe and ready. Um, in others, that's a foreign concept. Absolutely. Well, and I, I feel like there's nobody better to take on those challenges uh, since you do have the lens into, into the world, into the corporate world, having worked in marketing and you've got the skills of marketing and communications. Um, you, you do it so beautifully, even though I know sometimes it can be challenging. Well, for sure. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> So Valerie, what brings you the most joy at, at, in your NIA practice or as a NIA teacher or both? Mm. Yeah, on both ends, when I tap into, so from my student practice, 
when I exercise my right and permission to be authentic, to be myself, whatever that could look like, whether it looks messy and scary or beautiful and graceful. And the same is true when I see that in the student. I, I just think that is, that's where the juice is at. That's, um, that's what makes us feel better. At least I, from my standpoint, I feel like that's when I step out from that experience. <sighs> I'm a different person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it brings me a lot of joy to see that, to witness mm -hmm. it. Well, it's so powerful to not only have the step into your own permission and empowerment of being your full authentic self, but to then create and hold the space for others to do the same is just magical. Uh, I think that I can share. You are expecting uh, a, a little one on the, on the way. So you're 33 weeks along, is that correct? Yeah. yeah, so that, that third trimester <laughs> is here. <Yeah>, there. <laughs> <laughs> and you are radiant and and beautiful. And and as someone who also danced and taught Nia through my pregnancy, I would love if you're willing to share what it's what it's been like in in dancing through your your pregnancy. I did my Nia Brown doll with Debbie. It was extremely intentional to sign up for it in August of 2020. I knew that the, I, I had been planting that seed for nearly four to five years. And I was so excited to go to headquarters. I thought I was going to Portland. I was so ready because after the Brown Bell, I was going to start planting the seed for the baby. <laughs> And, you know, the universe, God, goddess, all that is, uh, said, no, there's different plans. So I found out of my pregnancy about like one or two weeks into the Nia Brown Belt as I was taking it online. And I just thought, whoa, this was, this was supposed to happen this way. So I really feel that has um, taking the training with Debbie and more specifically to take it around the fundamentals of working with energy and um, observing in myself, who's usually a pretty energetic person by nature, um, the humbleness that comes with creating life and, and circulating life force in an optimal way. Um, it was the best thing that could have happened to me. So I kept teaching. I actually took on more classes. Um, I just felt like I, I was lucky. I, I consider myself lucky. I didn't have too much um, of the symptoms that would put me in bed the whole day. Uh, so I definitely honored my body as much as I can. And I have danced every day pretty much or every other day up until the 33 weeks. And I feel this has been the moment that I have called into my tools and my resource box the most, the most, the most, the most. I'm grateful that this platform of taking the NIA training online um, happened the way it did because now I've been revisiting a lot of the content on my own. So I'm still practicing my practice and I'm teaching for the next two to three weeks. And I feel really good. I feel my best after Nia. I really, really do. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, how could I stop doing this? You know, I'm a little nervous about like not being able to do it after the baby. And it's my first baby. So this is really um, super unknown, super beginner's mind. But um, I'm just grateful that community has showed up to practice with me and to be a part of my medicine for myself. Um, I can't imagine going through this without Mia. I, I, I really feel like I would be so much more challenged by the changes and the questions and, you know, the, the curiosity behind the whole thing. I've been, I feel like I really have been dancing with it and it's been um, beautiful and, and scary. <laughs> that's the truth of course of course and it can be both yeah it can be both and will likely continue to be on the oh, other side <laughs> 
And, you know, I've gotten really great insight from our community yeah. members that are mamas. They're in, and it's just, it's like this well that just keeps giving, the gift that keeps giving. And, it, and I'm just, um, I just feel so lucky that it's available and that I recognize the power it has and how it contributes to my health and well-being and that I'm committed once again to be in that collaboration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Collaboration and co-creation. And, and with all of the tool, all of the NIA tools in your toolbox, I, I can speak for myself having been through it. It was so empowering uh, to, to know how to, to take care of myself in every moment and to listen and to tweak and to change. And, and I was only a white belt when I went through my pregnancy. So I, I am so glad that you with all of the tools now um, can really continue to ride the waves of change, but always come back to choosing sensation, to tap into joy. You make me remember also how much um, value having specialty trainings has been for me throughout the pregnancy. Um, so I did uh, moving to heal and it's a very committed apprenticeship program as well. And I, I was committed to that, completed it and I did move it. And then we've got, and I've got classic Nia and to rotate or to bring in the education from those three facets of Nia has given me the ability to tone it down when I need to, to adapt and to be more um, conscious about modifying for all sorts of students in class. So that has been um, very unique for me because I've never experienced that in my own body on an everyday basis. Today, I, I feel like I can move it. And tomorrow I need me a moving to heel. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and to have those those two poles, the, the polarity, um, both wonderful practices that you can pick up and put down and interchange and tweak, that, that's really powerful. So I just have one last uh, question or invitation for you. And that is, as you reflect on your 10 year NIA journey, I, I've always loved the acronym for NIA, now I am. N-I-A, now I am. So standing where you are now, sitting where you are now, how, how do you complete the sentence, now I am? Now I am in partnership. I'm in partnership with my body. And that can go in so many ways. Mm-hmm. With a partner, you ride the ups and the downs and you see your way through. So I would say that's what resonates for me in this moment now. Beautiful. Valerie, thank you for thank sharing you. your light. You are you are an Ania lighthouse, shining the light <laughs> and the joy and the passion, not only in your community, but really it's palpable and can be sensed all over the world. We have never met in person, but I feel like I, like I know you and I know that I'm not alone in that. So thank you for all that you bring and share with the global Nia community and with your local community and with your family and your baby to be. Uh, I'm, you are a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Many lighthouses out there. They shine their light towards me too. It's a give and receive. Absolutely. Very happy to be here. Thank you, Christina. Mm-hmm. And thank you for sharing your story. <laughs> and thank you all for watching this month's Dancing Through Life. We'll see you next time.